friends, Fire on Pop here, and today I came across a very interesting article, and uh, and, and I wanted to share it with you. Uh, it was in uh, Shooting Illustrated. Hope you can see that. Um, and it was an article that was entitled uh, "Bedroom Battery." Bedroom Battery, and it. it, it what caught my attention was this, uh, the, the little uh, blurb that it had for it. It said, sure you can dial 911 and hope for the best, but the bad guy in your home just took the kitchen phone off the hook. Now you can't dial out, so you'd better be prepared. Okay, kind of caught my attention and went, whoa, never thought of that. Uh, need a cell phone in the bedroom, because uh, the, the house phone could get disabled before uh, I get a chance to dial 911. Anyway, the beginning of the article talks about uh, rifle, shotgun, pistol, uh, what your choice is. Uh, but I'm not going to get into that this, uh, today. I want to jump right to a section that's called Defending the Fort. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, I'm going to go on with this and it says, Generally speaking, it is better to fort up and let the bad guys come to you than to go looking for them. This isn't going to be true in all cases, but it is usually better to assume a defensive position, especially when outnumbered. Fighting from a good defensive position can give you as much as a 5 to 1 advantage over an attacker. In other words, it could take up to 5 attackers to succeed against one well-prepared defender. If you are fortunate enough to have the resources, to build a fortified home, one thing you can do is to build a safe room where you can gather your family, secure yourself, and wait out the attack while communicating your need for help. Now, you know, in, <clears throat> this is even before I was into firearms, uh, um, in my, when something went bump in the night, my wife would nudge me and say, uh, go, go find out what's going on. Uh, and I would uh, venture through the house. Uh, well, naked, and I always figured I had the laugh factor there if I, if I did get caught. But uh, uh, I would have a bayonet or, or some weapon in my hand, and I'd go searching through the house to see the cause of the noise, uh, rather than uh, ford up in, in the event it was someone uh, attempting to, uh, to break into the house. So uh, that right, right, right away it just changed my philosophy on uh, if I did hear something, what to do. Okay, <clears throat> goes on to say, what should we uh, be doing if you don't have the ability to construct a fortress and purchase all the necessary security systems, gear and weapons? Starting from the outside and working in, we should do the best we can to make it hard for an intruder to gain entry. I once asked a fellow instructor, a SWAT breacher, uh, if there was any way I could keep him from breaking into my home and he replied, not a chance. Okay. So unless you want to live in a castle, literally, all you can do is slow down the bad guys and force them to create enough of a ruckus to alert you and give you time to implement your plan. Okay, makes good sense. Use uh, good quality locks, strike plates and hinges, and by all means keep the doors locked anytime you are at home, especially when sleeping. Having a dog inside the house can be invaluable. It need not be an attack dog. Its job is to bark and sound the alarm. I've said that for a long time. Perhaps the sound will scare off the intruders, but at least it will give you the moment you need to come to your senses. Realize you have a problem, arm yourself, and prepare to defend your family. That, that's the part that, that kind of bothers me because uh, you have to go in and... Uh, uh, if you have children, gather them and bring them into the, to your room or your fortified room. Uh, and maybe it should be your child's room that's the fortified room and you just go into it and, and uh, hunker down in there. Uh, that's a decision you really have to make yourself. Uh, uh, I would. Okay, so moving right along. Jeff Cooper once wrote, If your pistol is not within reach as you are reading this, uh, you haven't learned the lessons we, we uh, teach at Gunsight. Very good advice indeed. When the door comes crashing in, 
it is little late to be looking for your pistol or trying to unlock the gun safe. If you don't want to have a pistol on your person at all times, you should keep one handy as you move about in the home. How you handle this depends a lot on the age, maturity, and training of your family members. Make them aware, get them trained, and make them a reasonable decision on the disposition of your firearms. Now, I, I personally have a struggle there. My wife just really, um, it's, for her it's nice to know that they're there, has no desire to go and, and handle it, uh, shoot off a couple of rounds just to see what it's like uh, or anything. She feels uh, if the need arises, she'll figure it out. And uh, it's just not going to happen. That you, you, something happens, your adrenaline starts going, your fear factor sets in, and you're not going to think straight to begin with. And you're only going to do what you're trained to do or what your, your muscle memory uh, will allow you to do. Anyway, I'm getting off track here. Assuming the master bedroom is going to be your safe room, the first thing you want to do is install a solid door and some good locks and hinges. Most interior doors on uh, the average home are not meant to, uh, for keeping anyone out there, they are designed simply for privacy. Get a solid bedroom door. If you have a hallway leading to your bedroom or bedrooms, you might consider the idea of installing a wrought iron security gate in the hallway. The gate can be locked at night and the dog or cat can easily pass through it while intruders are going to be hard pressed to get to you. In the bedroom, you are going to want to secure one or more firearms. These can be hidden in a safe or in plain view. You are going to have to determine how to do this based on your location, family, lifestyle and perceived threat. Although you are sure to have a telephone extension in the bedroom, this is easily disabled by anyone in another part of the house by simply taking the other phone off the hook. If <clears throat> for this reason you want to leave a cell phone in the bedroom or make sure that you take one to bed with you. Having several power flash, powerful flashlights is another good idea as well as having uh, weapon lights installed on one or more of your bedroom firearms. Sla uh, Stashing a good set of amplified electronic hearing protection in the bedroom is also a good idea. I, I just, I never even thought of that, uh, but the amplified uh, hearing protection, and now these days they are really uh, reasonable in your bedroom. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't know if you've ever gone to the range and I've had my hearing protection up because I was talking to somebody, doing something, and turned and went and shot, and it hurts. And this is outdoors. Uh, and, and even a 22 can really sting um, on the hearing. So imagine in your bedroom shooting a 9mm or, or larger, okay, uh, 38 or 357 Magnum uh, inside a closed room. It's going to just really hurt. It's going to devastate your family that you have in that room. So you may think about uh, putting some hearing protection. The amplified ones are the best idea because you'll get to... Uh, be able to listen uh, to what's going on as well. Okay, so <clears throat> I don't want to dwell on that too long. Wearing them, you can hear the bad guys talking about, and if uh, forced to shoot, your ears will thank you. Amen. If you have ever experienced shooting, say a, a, a .223 your Remington carbine indoors without hearing protection, trust me, you don't want to. Exactly what I just said. <clears throat> the plan in action now. How many times have I talked about the plan, the plan, the plan? Have a plan. If you don't have a plan in your mind, when it comes to uh, uh, the stuff hitting the fan, you're only going to do what you planned on or at least remember it. If you don't do that, uh, you don't have a chance. Adrenaline, fear are going to take over and uh, you're going to go blank. Okay, so. Let's assume you're at home and become aware someone is breaking in. If you aren't already in the designated safe room, you and everyone in the house should get there as quickly as possible. Don't wait, at, don't wait to find out what's going on. Run to the safe room and secure the door. Get behind cover, such as a king-sized bed, while another family member calls 911. Break out the heavy artillery in the form of a shotgun or rifle and point it at the bedroom door. 
stay on the line with the 911 operator. You want them to hear and record what is going on. Like you yelling, don't come in here. I'm armed and I will shoot. This scenario can play out several ways. In the best case, <clears throat> the bad guys, or guy or guys, can get the message and leave. In the worst case, they break down the door and despite warnings, they are now leaking bo bodily fluid all over your carpet or they have run off, either, either with or without having been shot. In any case, the police are going to show up. Stay on the line with the 911 operator and make sure the police officers are positively identified before letting them in. Now there's the tricky part. Remember, you have called for help and it has arrived. The officers are going to be very uh, wary and perhaps just as scared as you are. Once they arrive on the scene, they are in charge. Let them say, let me say that again. Once they are on the scene, they are in charge. Okay? <clears throat> do what they tell you to do, even if it offends you to, uh, to have someone in your home giving you orders. But put down your weapons and step away from them. If told to get on the ground, do it. If handcuffed, do not fight. The officers are going to secure the scene and what means you, the bad guys, and anyone else they perceive as a threat. Stay calm, understand the process in due course, it will uh, all get straightened out. The important thing is to think and plan in advance. And there is that think and plan in advance part. Play the what will I do if game. Talk it over with your family. Get some training and prepare your weapons and physically secure aids security aids. Then should something go bump in the night, you'll be happy you made the effort. Uh, I agree. And, and you really would be happy you made the effort. Uh, and, and just a secure feeling that you know you have a plan. Uh, doesn't have to be written, doesn't have to be. Your family should know what the plan is. I went, growing, up, uh, growing up, raising our children, we always had a, uh, a fire or emergency plan. If we all had to vacate the house, we had a, a, a meeting spot. So we could, we had four kids, five kids really at the time, uh, we can go one, two, three, four, five and make sure they were all safe and sound with us. Uh, if we all had to vacate the house in different windows or whatever because of a fire or, or other catastrophe. So you got to have a plan. And all the kids, once they're old enough, need to know the plan. Of course, if they're not old enough, then it's your job to, to get them. So the other thing here, it had a home battery checklist. And it said solid door with secure locks. Uh, there's ways to doing that. Uh, telephone and cell phone, okay, in the bedroom. Flashlights, 100 or more lumens preferred, okay. House key with glow stick or small flashlight attached. Shotgun, carbine, pistol as appropriate, dedicated weapon light recommended. Okay. Gun safe or other secure storage for firearms as needed. Amplified electronic hearing protection. And dog, man's best friend, can alert you to danger. Okay, so just some really good sound advice, um, some things to think about, and uh, I enjoy uh, sharing these kind of articles with you. Uh, they they mean a lot to me, and uh, and uh, hopefully uh, they meant something to you that uh, you appreciated hearing this. So. Um, you can uh, friend me on Firearm Pop and on Facebook at Firearm Pop. You can find me on the web at FirearmPop.com. And as usual, this is Firearm Pop. Be safe out there, and God bless. Bye now.